All right, coming next to the stage is J. Walter Brahman. Brahman, clap it up. Sorry about that. No, nah, it's all right. Some of them have seen my set before. So, I like to deal with something. Uh, my name. My name is uh, J. Walter Brahman. That's what I'm currently going by. Because I have a very long name. It's not unpronounceable, it's just very long. My full name is Benjamin James Walter Brayman. That's four names. That's a lot more than anybody needs. I feel like if anybody here doesn't have a middle name, I'm probably the one that stole it. But Benjamin served me for a good while. But after I hit about the age 25, 26, I said, you know, I kind of need a change. So from the ages of 0 to 25, I went by Benjamin. Now I'm now 26, I'm going by J. Walter Brayman, and I think when I hit 50, be the next time I need a name change, I'll probably go by something different. Probably inmate number 712-475, but that's just the way things work. Um, so I'd like to go off on a rant for a quick second about the show Intervention. A&E reality show about people that are trying to get off drugs. I saw an episode recently where the girl was a duster addict. You know, compressed air used to clean your keyboard. And the show makes a big deal out of it. We gotta get this girl off of duster. She's gotta stop using duster. And about 10 minutes into the episode, uh, they just casually, very casually mention that the girl is also an anorexic cutter. And then the show cuts to a scene of her slumped against the wall, her shirt off, yelp, bone ribs sticking through her yellow jaundiced skin as she hacks away at her wrist. And then out of the corner of the screen comes that duster can. Dude, that's no, that's officially no longer the problem. All right. And no, no, then, then her family comes in for the big intervention, and they're still just talking about duster. Honey, we've got to get you off the duster. But don't stop starving yourself or hacking at your wrist with razor blades, because we'll be honest, we raised a really boring daughter, and you've got to do something to be interesting. It's like if I ask you, you know, hey, I need a babysitter. It's like, well, I know this guy, but uh, I don't know if you're going to like him. He's got a lazy eye. That's, that's not so bad. Bring, bring him over. And then, you know, then he babysits your kid, and about a week, like, week later, you run into the same guy. Hey, you know, that, that guy was actually a pretty good babysitter. Yeah, you know, that lazy eye can throw you off. You'd never guessed he was a repeat pederast, would you? <laughs> so I have, an, I have a proposal for advertisements. I saw an ad recently. It kind of changed my life. It was a quote from Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. It flashed across the, across the screen. Then a picture of Martin Luther King. And then the Chevy logo and a giant picture of a Chevy Silverado come up on the screen. And I thought, you know, I can do a lot better than that. I can, I can really tug at the old heartstrings of an advertisement. Think about this. Your newest spokesperson for Kroger Supermarkets and Pharmacies, former Arizona Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords. Because, because I used to really dread going into my local supermarket, but at my local Kroger, I know the only thing that's going to blow my mind are the low, low prices. <laughs> and I think, you can, I think you can animate a piece of her skull flying off and out pop that week's specials. <laughs> no, but I know I hear what you're thinking. Let's go even more recently. Amy Winehouse for Jack Daniels. Kurt Cobain for Remington Shotguns. <laughs> hey, here's one. Let's jump on the bandwagon early. Paula Deen for Land O'Lakes Butter. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paula Deen, and my fat ass is the worst thing to happen to trans fat since last tango in Paris. Ah, <laughs> oh, not a big Brando crowd tonight. It's all right, guys. The movie involves a woman getting fucked in the ass with a stick of butter. There you go. That's the joke. I'm J. Walter Brayman. Tonka Shane. Good novin. <laughs> You it up again. All right, coming next to the stage is a very funny man. He runs the 955 Club. Give it up for Ray Bullock. Yes! Applaud lots of people. Applaud, bitches. Yes! 
awesome. Give it up for all the comics you saw. Kwame for host and Jay Walter. Michael. Oh, she was great, wasn't it? <laughs> no, give it up for all of them, man. Seriously, this is the most eclectic group I have ever seen in Cafe Diem. It's awesome. It's great. We got, like, the roadie from Metallica over here, the real Hal's wives of Mechanicsville over here. <laughs> The guys I'm not going to follow into an airplane over here. It's going to be nice. Going to be really good. Good, 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 good. And you got one Asian dude sitting with you. Is he like the pimp? What's going on over here? He's got no sleeves on. He's like, you give me my money, okay? You know, it's wonderful. It's fucking wonderful here to buy people. Silver's recording. Yeah. By the way, don't use this because I have a political career that will never happen. Oh, holy hell. Oh, I want to talk to you folks real quick, real quick. I'm a little upset, little upset about some shit. Golden Corral just needs to fucking stop, all right? They got cotton candy. Cotton candy! And a chocolate fountain. Just change your fucking name to Type 2. Jesus! It's all you can eat. Chocolate fountain, cotton candy, and steaks. That should be the... Just go with it, Golden Corral. Say, come on into Golden Corral. Lose a foot. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> Holy hell in the handbasket, Batman. They're serving cotton fucking candy. <laughs> Jesus, man. That's, and I'm a fat man, too. Don't get... I am fat, and I am proud to be fat. I see a lot of you skinny people in here. Fuck you. Your mamas didn't love you enough to feed you. That's what I'm saying right here, right now. <laughs> Yeah, I'm serious. You were a disappointment. She took your cookies away. Okay, that's what happened. And I am proud to be fat, but I'm also an American. American. So when I see someone fatter than me, I judge them. That's how that works out, people. That's how that works. Because I know, I know how this happened. There have been many a night, many a night, where I said a tub of strawberry cake frosting and a pint of Ben and Jerry's chunky monkey ice cream sounded like a good idea. So when I see someone fatter than me, I have to ask, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> did you walk into CeCe's Pizza and go, K? <laughs> that. Oh, and put cotton candy on it and put some chocolate too. Why the fuck not? Oh, my dear God. But there's some beautiful women here tonight. Beautiful women in here tonight. Yeah, boy, boy. Uncle Fester's frisky tonight, bitches. <laughs> some of you older women are sitting there saying, wow, when did that guy from R.E.M. let himself go? It's just the situation. I'm so sexy as hell. Oh, sexy as hell. Mm. See, and a lot of girls don't like that. They like the, the, the muscles with the definition and the stuff and the six-pack. And I go to the gym and I poop regularly. Whatever that is. <laughs> See, and a lot of them are like, well, I like a guy who's into his body. He's into his body. That's just it. He's into his body. He could give a shit less about yours. A fat, tubby, no-neck, bald-headed piece of shit like myself? Oh, I'm going to treasure it like it was a fine wine. Oh, yeah, I'm going to let it breathe for a little while, swish it around in my mouth, savor every fucking drop, lock you in a cellar when I'm done. It's going to be a situation. <laughs> That's what I'm saying here, people. <laughs> Having some fun times. I have a feeling you're going to stab me before the show's over. You're just looking at me like, hmm. You look like Rob Zombie. I'm going to end up in a fucking movie. It's going to be bad. <laughs> nah, give it up for that guy. Give it up for that guy. Come on. He's a good guy. Oh, I see. It's like the Asian syndicate. Andy's over here. It's like he brought the entire fucking continent with him. That's nice. That's good. <laughs> We're just like one fucking nail salon and a call center away. We can make this shit happen. We can make this shit happen. Racism is funny. Anyway, <laughs> notice the black dudes in the back like, yeah, you just keep that shit to the Asian people. That's all I'm saying. That's something. Sean, the, the doorman, he, he, he likes to play. He's a friend of mine, he, but he likes to play this wonderful game. It's called Tell the White People It's Okay to Say the N-Word. <laughs> and see how fast it takes me to get knocked the fuck out by another black man. <laughs> I'm going to let you, all my white, blue-eyed, blonde-haired, cracker, honky devils, let me tell you this right now. We're still not allowed to use the N-word. <laughs> Especially if there are N-words around. Know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying, Mechanicsville. Work with me here. I'm sure some of you are going to be saying on electric night. Anyway, come on. <laughs> they got it. <laughs> I'm going to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. But I, I'm actually... Uh, 
Thank you guys so much for coming out to see stand-up comedy. There's stand-up comedy every night of the week here in Richmond, which is something I'm really proud about. Check out the other rooms, other spaces. You got Fallout, you got McCormick's, you got stuff in Petersburg. Please keep stand-up comedy alive in Richmond. And make it happen. Uh, and real quick, and I'm not trying to do any jokes right here, right now. There are a couple of folks that are coming up here for the very first time tonight. And please give a big round of applause for Bill for giving these guys a stage to actually try it out for the very first time ever in the Seriously. It's an old hat joke, but it's very true. The first time you're doing comedy is just like the first time you're having sex. It's awkward. You forget about half the stuff you wanted to do. There's a chance you're not going to get paid. Uh, there's usually a fat guy in the corner laughing a little bit while he touches himself awkwardly. At least it was that way for me. Listen, if y'all been drinking tonight, let somebody else drive you home. You plan on doing other things tonight. Don't fuck up. Fuck safe. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Give it again uh, for uh, Ray Bullock. Uh, coming up now to the stage, another very funny guy. Give it up for James Polk. Word, I appreciate such a warm welcome from y'all. I only got five, so let's get right into it. If you haven't seen me before, the answer is yes. This is what I look like. I have a beard. I'm proud of it. I love it. I'm going to start making bumper stickers that are all for pro beard. Pro beard bumper stickers like beards. There's a thin line between handsome and homeless. <laughs> beards. Thousands of Amish women couldn't be wrong. Beards. Because it made Jim Morrison look cool and he was a douche. Or beards. Gay bars are already awkward enough without knowing who the bears are. <laughs> beards, I love it. There's so much going on in the world recently. Andy Cooper, gay. Andy Griffith, dead. Andy Dick, gay and dead to the world still. <laughs> He'll love that he's topical. <laughs> as far as fast food goes, I think Wendy looks a lot more like Ronald McDonald, I'll be honest. <laughs> I saw a bumper sticker that wasn't pro beard the other day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, hop it on. I like it. I like it. Look me up, beards all day. I'm not as committed as you, sir, but I love it. I'm halfway. I'm halfway up the evolutionary ladder. You're back a little bit further. Um, this bumper sticker said, my poodle is smarter than your honor roll student. And that is asinine, because I'm pretty sure I've never seen an honor roll student eating its own shit. <laughs> You should have gone pro beard, that's what I'm saying. Uh, excuse me. I had too much Diet Coke. I'm not a drinker. I'll share that story another night, I swear. Um, <clears throat> where am I at? Oh, advice for some couples in here. If you want to avoid things getting stale in the bedroom, keep the edible underwear in Tupperware. When it comes to porn, I like my porn like I like my wrestling, full of midgets and foreign objects. <laughs> I saw a picture of Lady Gaga's tour bus recently, and honestly, I thought it would be a little bit shorter. Because Lady Gaga is retarded. I'm sorry, if one of my kids walked out of the room dressed like her, I would immediately take the paste out of her hand and be like, what? What are you doing? Okay. 
I'll stick with the beginning of that, I guess. Kanye West will never have to worry about penis envy because he is definitely the biggest dick ever. <laughs> as far as his girlfriend goes, I personally think Kim Kardashian should get a diamond shaved in her no-no patch to represent her a high occupancy vagina. <laughs> like that thing is open to all traffic, period. <laughs> Uh, I uh, was blessed to have the opportunity to perform uh, a show recently and Oprah Winfrey ended up being in the crowd and she came up to me afterwards and she was like, you know, I think that I am your biggest fan ever. And I was like, you're definitely the biggest one I've met so far. <laughs> I mean, come on. If you were like, hey, Oprah, check under the seat. What is this? Surprise! You're exceeding the weight limit of that chair. Totally, like... Okay, a black mamba. One bite can kill a large elephant or put one of Oprah's legs to sleep for a little bit. <laughs> but she loves me, so that's cool. I greatly appreciate everybody's time and attention this evening. Thank y'all so much. Give it up for James Polk again.